5 o'clock on a Wednesday, which means it's time for... Craig and Marlon's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Marlon. Welcome back to another review show right here on... Magic TV. You had to think about that. No. It was Magic TV, correct. <laughs> I'm here with the most annoying little magician in the world, and we are... Him. You. Him. You. Him. And we go, I'm not a little magician. It's I'm far small. from a little magician. You're <laughs> yes, little, I'm not. We're going to be reviewing five new items this week. Uh, unfortunately, there's one that we're not going to perform, um, just purely because I just can't be asked. We'll get to that a little bit later on. It's going to take quite a long time to set it up, and I can't be bothered. So uh, we're going to be performing four of the tricks, but we're going to be reviewing uh, five tricks this week. And we're going to start off with... Um, we're going to start off with a new trick that's just come out. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't think it was going to be very good until I actually watched the tutorial. And I'm pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Let's start off with that. So the first trick we are looking at is Mysterious Presents Flame Take by uh, Lucas Hilkin and Mysterious Creative Dream. Uh, and flame take is a really interesting concept. What it is basically is it gives you the ability to take a lighter, light the lighter, pull the flame from the lighter and throw it back onto the lighter. So that's basically what it is. Now, I watched the trailer for this and I don't watch trailers very often. I watched the trailer for this and I thought this is going to be really impractical. For many different reasons. First of all, it's going to be a really convoluted setup. It's going to be something that's going to be ridiculously angly. I'm probably going to have to have special clothing requirements. It's really surprised. It says here, you're going to learn different handlings for close-up, walk-around, parlour, stage, and a part dedicated to social media. And you are absolutely correct with this, 100%. Um, it is really, it really practical. It is. Extremely medical. It really is. is. Yeah, I'd agree with all of that. Um... Because here's the thing, it is really practical. You get two gimmicks, you get two gimmicks. Um, they are really small, okay? And uh, like we're talking really small, they're about the size of a nail, they're really small. And it allows you to do this incredible trick, which you're gonna see a performance of in a minute. And um, you can have it in your pocket and you can get into position in it in like literally a second. So think about how easy it is to, to slip a thumb tip onto your thumb. That's how easy it is to get this gimmick into position. However, they've actually even thought about ways of doing it so you don't even have to go into your pockets. So if you use a Zippo lighter, you can actually have the gimmick. They give you uh, everything that you need to attach the gimmick to the back of a Zippo lighter. So you can bring the lighter out, you can show it, and in the action of taking it into this hand to light it, you've set the gimmick, and then you do the, you do the trick, and then when you put the Zippo lighter away, you've put the gimmick back into place, and you're reset, ready to go again. Yeah. So you can do this anytime, anywhere. And one of the things that I was really impressed with with this project is the amount of ideas that they actually give you to do with it. Yeah. Because a lot of the stuff that comes out these days, isn't it right? You yeah. basically get like one or two ideas and that's it. And it's like a five minute tutorial. This is like a 40 minute tutorial. They go through absolutely everything. Quantum was five hours. Quantum was five hours, but I'm an idiot. Now, <laughs> we're going to start off by doing one of my favorite applications of this, which is a coin production. So it's a way of actually making a coin appear at the beginning of a um, at the beginning of a coin set. And this is a really nice way to actually start a coin set. A lot of the guys that do coin manipulation, they'll start by maybe lighting a, a piece of flash paper and producing a coin. This for me is better. Let me quickly perform that for you now so yeah. you can see what it looks like. Right, and I'm gonna show you something with a lighter. Okay. okay. It's not very heavy. Do you know why it's not very heavy? Why? It's a lighter. <laughs> terrible, terrible joke. Your mum your mom loved that joke. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show you how to make a pirate coin appear from a lighter. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, you're not actually making it appear from the lighter. You're making it appear from the flame. Watch this. You just have to take the flame. And then you can turn it into a pirate coin. And that... Do that again. What? I've only, I only had one coin palmed. I can't do it again. <laughs> so what did you, what do you think of that coin production, Mike? I think it's really yeah. cool, isn't it? Just yeah. like, boom, made the coin appear. It looks... Bam. Yeah, you take the lighter, you pull the flame off, whoosh, turns into a coin, and then you just put the lighter away, and you reset, and you're ready to go into whatever coin routine you want to go into. But that's a, a, an idea of what you can do with it in a close-up situation. 
uh, on stage, I used to do a thing many, many years ago in my, in my cabaret show where I'd come out and I'd start the show by taking a light and lighting the light up, pretending to take the light over here and throwing it back over there. And people weren't very impressed. And then I did a transposition of the lighter and, uh, you know, I went to light the lighter again. The lighter wasn't there and it was over there. Um, you can do this as a really nice opening routine on stage. So let me show you a performance of that. Just yeah. the sort of thing that you can do. Okay, Ryan, let me show you a trick, yeah? If I take this lighter, I can light it. I can take the flame and throw it back over there. Not no, it is. Look, look, I'll do it again. Watch, I take the flame and I... Sorry. Throw it back over there and you're impressed. No. Well, no, it's real magic. I tell you, what, I'll do it in slow motion. Like, are you ready? Ta da. So, I mean, that's a couple of applications, right, Ryan? Yeah. But there's so much you can do with this. It comes in a little golden chain uh, for a social media trick where you actually take a lighter. You light the lighter, uh, you take the flame off, you then split the flame into two, so you've got two flames, one in each hand, and then you go, and it turns into a really big golden chain. Now, that is not something you'd want to do in close-up, it's not something you'd want to do on stage, because it's quite an elaborate setup. But they have a special section on the tutorial for social media magic that has an extensive setup, it's very angly, but it would look good for social media. Um, but there's a ton of ideas that go through deck productions, how to make a deck of cards appear by lighting a lighter, taking the flame and turning it into a deck. You actually get a ton of black art gimmicks in here, and there's a section on black art on how you can take a, uh, take a, car, take a lighter, take the flame and turn it into a, a, a note, like a bill or a, a £10 note, or take it and turn it into a playing card. Like There's so much different stuff you can do with this it's a written now there's no live performances which really bugs me you know that that's kind of a bugbear of mine there's no live performances however um you know you have got like studio performances you have got everything is is performed to camera and there's other magicians that are involved in the project and there's videos of them doing it as well the whole thing is taught really well obviously you need to be careful it's 18 plus so you're not going to be able to do it for another nine years He's really annoyed about this. He's like, he's like, oh, wow, can I do it on social media? That looked great on Instagram. And I'm like, yes, it would. No, you can't. Um, however, watch his Instagram channel, because in eight and a half years' time, you'll see Flame Take. <laughs> so there you go. Um, eight and a half years. Eight and a half years' time, you can do Flame Take. But uh, it's, it's, it's really good. I love this. I'm definitely going to do this. I'm yeah. going to do this. I, I'll be honest, the thing I'll probably use it for most is the coin production. I have a Zippo lighter with me anyway. It's very easy to just stick the gimmick to the back of the Zippo lighter. What is a Zippo lighter? It's, it's like one of those lighters, those fancy lighters that you pop open. You, you, I've got a couple of them. You know, uh, you know what? You do know what I mean. No, I don't. It's like, whatever. <laughs> you do. I'll show no, you later. No, I'm not sure Okay. Uh, it's a fancy lighter. They're really quite expensive. Um, I carry a Zippo lighter around with me to gigs anyway. I just have this on the back of the Zippo lighter. I'm good to go anytime, anywhere. I'm going to give this 90%. I think it's really good. Uh, it's highly recommended. Be careful with it. You're dealing with fire. Um, but this, I've been playing around with this all day, haven't I? Like yeah. taking flames off and throwing them back on. And this was a lot safer than that crazy trick I did where I smashed my hand down and burnt my hand. Like this is, you know, just take your hand and smash it down on an open flame. All right, mate. Thanks for that. This is a lot safer because of how the gimmick works. It's, it's, it's a lot safer, but still you need to be careful, right? 90% for me, what you're giving it. Bearing in mind you can't do it because you're little. 79%. 79%. No, eight, 95. 95? You can't. You can't. Are, are you anticipating doing it in eight and a half years? Yeah. Okay. 95% from Ryan and 90% from me. This is really, 95%. really good. It's highly recommended. Okay, so next up we have X Card Monty by Joseph B. Now, this is a download. Normally, when I look at downloads, I do them on my own on the download lowdown. But I really wanted to bring this to your attention. Uh, I, there's not another download lowdown coming out for a couple of weeks and I really wanted to bring this to your attention because in a world of really kind of naff uh, instant downloads, this is incredible. I yeah. really like this. Anybody who watches the channel knows that both myself and Ryland are big Packet Trick fans. 
Well, this is a really cool packet trick. Now, Joseph B, I'm sure the name is familiar. He has bought out literally, I think I think he's now up to seven and a half thousand downloads on Begwood. Uh, it feels like that many anyway. Um, every day there's another 17 downloads. Um, and, and they're normally sort of mentalism type magic. I think he's got various different versions of ACAN and so on and so forth. This is a very different approach. It's more of a visual packet trick type thing. And it really stood out for me. It's on Penguin, it's only like $10. You can make it up, you just need a couple of gimmick cards that everybody has, and if not, you can get them from all good magic dealers relatively cheaply, and uh, grab a couple of old jokers and you can make this up yourself. It's a really good trick. Yeah. I'm gonna perform it to Ryland so you can see exactly what it looks like, and then we'll give it a review. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna show you a little game. We're gonna play a little game using okay. six jokers. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six jokers. Got it. Now I'm telling you right now, you're going to lose this game. And the no, reason no. you're going to lose is because I'm going to distract you with a magic trick. How are I distracting you? Yeah, no, I'm going to distract you. Uh, the magic trick will distract you and then you will lose the game. But it's actually a really simple, easy game to play. Let me explain how it works. I'm going to have you follow one of the jokers. Now this joker is the odd one out. It's easy to tell which the odd one out is. is because these jokers all have uh, blue backs. Whilst this one has a red back and I've put a big cross on it. So you've got five blue back chokers and you've got one red back choker. You have to follow the red back choker with the cross on it. Okay. If you get a red back choker with a cross on it, it means you win. Do you understand? Yeah. I'm going to put it down into the middle. Okay. But I'm going to stop talking about the game now. I'm going to start talking about the magic trick and hopefully you'll focus on the magic trick and then you'll lose the game. So, Ryland, let me show you the greatest magic trick of all time. I'm going to mix these jokers Face up into face down. One joker goes face down. Okay. One joker goes face up. One joker goes face down. One joker goes face up. One joker goes face down. One joker goes okay, face so up. Gotta face... be one of the face up. Stop thinking about the game. I'm showing you a magic trick. This is face up into face down. Now the idea is I'm going to take these jokers that are face up and face down. I'm going to show you something amazing because just like that the magic happens. You see now all of the jokers are actually facing the right way. One, two. Three, four, five, six. Magicians call that a triumph. That's the best trick ever. But by showing you that trick, you're now confused and you don't know which one's the joker and you'll lose. Remember, you've got to get one with a red back with a cross on it. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, okay, so just say stop. Stop. There, are you sure? Stop. Well, no, you said you yeah. stop there. Yeah, yeah, stop there. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. You happy with that one? Yeah. What did you were supposed to get? Card with the red cross, weren't you? That's a blue card. And it was a blue back card. You lost, Ryland. Well, I found the other one out. Well, sure. I, well, well here's no, the thing. Here's the thing. No, here's the thing, Ryland. Here's the thing. I don't know how you lost. You know why? Why? I, I, I can't understand how you lost this game. Well, it's kind of hard. No, it's not. Dude, I asked you to find a card with a red back and a cross. Every single joker had a red back and a cross on it. Every single one of them. You needed to find the, any of those and you messed it up and you got the only blue back joker. Basically what I I'm saying, Ryan. Out. Yeah, but you, you, I didn't say find the odd one out. I said find the red back joker. And you, basically, Ryan, what I'm saying is you suck. So there you go. That's uh, yeah, X card Monty. Now... I love the presentation behind it. He didn't really give a presentation to it, so the presentation was kind of my approach to kind of justify everything that was going on. Um, but I love the idea of distracting somebody with a magic trick and, uh, you know, telling them they've got to find the, uh, uh, you know, the red back card and then they don't find it. And, well, I don't know how you didn't. They're all red back cards. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice kicker ending. There's a lot of magic that happens in this trick throughout. And then you've got this kicker ending that they just, don't see coming that's really fun now full disclosure i added a couple of things to the routine he uses a fingertip elmsley count style count which he teaches very very detailed uh tutorial on there um i switched to a hammond style count just because i found that like easier for me um, so i used a hammond style count he uses an elmsley style count but you know by the by and uh, and at the end where i'm having ryan and say stop uh, that's a move of mine that I added so that they can have a free choice of joker as opposed to uh, what he did, which was just put one card down on the table. So there's a couple of variations, slight variations that I've, I've changed around with it, just really to help the routine hit my own narrative of how I wanted to present it. But basically, it's a really good trick. Yeah. It's a really, really good trick. Um, <laughs> it is an instant reset. You put it away in your pocket, you're instantly yep. reset, ready to go again. It's relatively easy to do. If you've 
done a packet trick or two in your in your life, you'll know a lot of the moves that you need to be able to do this. If you can do an Elmsley count, you know, yeah. they're all variations on yeah. an Elmsley count. Um, it's an engaging presentation. The only negative is the cards can't be examined at the end. Uh, half of them can, half of them can't. But there you go, I'll give you half the cards, I'll take the other half. <laughs> <laughs> but the ones that can be examined, like the, the card that they really want to examine is the one they pick, and that's the one that, uh, yeah, that they, uh, they, can. Th they can examine. Um, and, and he goes through options on the download as well, where he talks about um, adding a frustration count at the end for a cleaner display and so on and so forth. But yeah, it's a really fun packet trick. It's only $10. You're going to have the cards lying around the house. It's a fun routine to practice. It's a fun routine to change around to make your own, like I did, to be honest. Uh, and I'm definitely going to be taking this out and about and seeing how it goes. Um, it, it, one negative, there's no uh, live performance. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing this as a common problem in the, in the industry. Yeah. No live performances. Hell, you know, we're magicians. We're selling magic to magicians. We're selling magic tricks designed for people to perform. Why are people not putting live performances on their uh, tutorials? I just yeah. don't understand. It's so easy to get a live performance. It's just driving me up the wall. But that's the only negative. It's a really fun packet trick. I'm going to give it 92%. What about you? 93. 93. 93%. Uh, okay, 93%. 92% uh, for me, 93% for me. Uh, him. It's a really good trick. Now... We're going to talk about the trick of the week. I think we both agree that this is trick of the week. And this is this is a project where there are multiple live performances. And rightfully so, because the guy that's created this should be very proud of this product. This is one of the best tricks to hit the market in 2022, in my opinion. Let's have a look at that right now. Yeah. So next up, we have the Secret Tannery Presents Scratch by... It's got, it's got scratched off. I think it's Jared Kearney. I think it's Jared Kearney. Uh, I'd never heard of this guy um, until I got this got brought to my attention. You can't get this from anywhere other than the Secret Tanneries website. And uh, I bought this and a couple of other things, which we'll be seeing the review of coming up in the in the future. And this is incredible. Incredible. Now, a few people were talking about this at Blackpool 2022. Uh, I remember Eric Tate, my friend Eric Tate, saying to me, this is one of the best things that you saw at Blackpool. And I didn't get a chance to see it. Um, it no, nah, and this, he's right, this is absolutely killer. incredible. It's killer, isn't it? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of different ways of presenting it. The tutorial is very in-depth. Uh, he goes through things with a fine-tooth comb. Um, and there's multiple live performances, which is good. Uh, I'm going to get, before, if you haven't heard of it, Scratch, I'm going to get Ryan's performance so you can see exactly how it plays. And then after he's performed it, we'll talk about what uh, what we think. Okay, so here I have three different things. I have a quantum deck, a Sharpie, and a um, wallet. Okay. So a quantum deck, a Sharpie. Not my quantum deck. No. A quantum deck. A quantum deck. Okay. One with faces. Yes. Backs. Okay. Okay, so before we start, I'm going to get Mommy to use name a number. Mommy, can you name a number? Yeah, what sort of number? Like, what we're we talking? One to a hundred. Um, okay, let's go for 80. 80. Okay, now, Dad, can you name a number? Um, 33. 33 and 80. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, what I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you to pick a card. Any okay. card you want, I'm going to get you to pick a card. All you got to do, okay, just say stop and tell me yours. Stop. There. Yeah. So when you look at that card, remember it, don't forget it. Okay, got it, yeah. Got it, put it back. Okay. And then you cut the cards. In fact, we're even going to put the cards away back inside the pack. Okay, that's fair. Now, I don't know what your card is. Now, no. I am going to make a prediction. Okay. You're going to make a prediction? Yeah. You're going to read my mind? Yeah, I'm going to read your mind. Okay? I've never had my mind read before. That's just exciting stuff. Yes, you are, when you know you are. Oh, no, I'm trying to be nice. Yeah, you wanted me to concentrate on the card or something? Yeah, I want you to concentrate on the card as hard as you can. I'm concentrating. Concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. Any particular part of it? All of it. All of it. Not just the corner. Reds. Is it? I don't know. Um, concentrate on like the value. Okay. Concentrate on the suits. I've got it. Okay, now I think I'm done. Okay. I think I've got this. All right. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my prediction off like this. 
Okay. Set it face down so no one can see. Can you put the pen back on the lid? Yeah, sure. Okay, now, I'm going to put the wallet down like that. Okay. Now, but think, we, you picked any card. You said stop at any point you wanted. Yes. You could have changed your mind, but you wanted that card. I wanted the card. This has been here the whole time. But it hasn't, you just wrote it. Yeah, I, yeah, I just wrote it, but the first time you look at your... I mean, the first time can you... I'm thinking of one. The first time can you name your card out loud? It was the Jack of Spades. The Jack of Spades. I had this prediction here the whole time. The Jack of Spades. That's amazing. That's really good. Thank you. Is that the trick? No. I was about to say it's good, but it's <laughs> a card for Spain. <laughs> I've seen well, you do better. Yeah. Okay, so this wallet has been here the whole time. Mm -hmm. The whole time. This is what I wrote down. I'm just going to open the wallet like this. Now you'll notice that there's one thing inside this wallet and one thing only. I'm going to take it out. Okay. See, What's that? Over. Business turn card. It turn it over. It's a scratch card. It's a scratch card. I don't have a coin, but I have a key. Okay. Scratch it. I love how you come, but no, you can't no. scratch it with a key. Get one of the pirate coins in the bar. I can't believe you're so unprepared. No, go around that way so you're not in front of the camera. This is this is this is what we have on Magic TV. Nothing but professionalism in every performance. I don't even have a coin myself. So, we've got a scratch card here. A scratch card that has been in his wallet the entire time. What am I doing with it? Scratching it. You scr I'm scratching the, the thing. Yeah. Righty ho, okay. Thirty-three, that's the number that I thought of. <laughs> that's cool. What was your number, sir? Eighty. Is it on my number in there as well? 80, check that out, 33 and 80, those are the two numbers that we thought of. Right there, underneath the scratch card, how cool is that? Mm. Okay, so that is, uh, that is Scratch. Now, that, now, that's one of many ways in which you can perform it. That's my favourite way. Uh, I love the idea. Oh, yeah, that's your favourite one. I love the idea of saying, having that hook line, I'm going to show you the difference between mind reading and prediction. And having just randomly two people pick uh, numbers, and you say, okay, fantastic, pick a card, I'm going to see if I can read your mind, boom, you're done. Because that whole mind reading thing gives you the justification that you need to do the other part of the trick. Now, Ryland does this with uh, forcing a card. I do this with digital force bag. So I have them think of a celebrity and I make a prediction of a celebrity, yeah. which is the same sort of thing. He's using a pack of cards, I'm using a celebrity. Um, however, on the project, um, we also get told how you can do it without actually having that first phase. So how you can actually prep the gimmick in real time, which is nice because he actually talks about how to do that as well, which is good. Um, but I mean, ultimately... Well, can't you do it while you're doing the thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's lots of, exactly, there's lots of different ways you can do it. But the ultimately, what you have here is a beautiful leather wallet, and it is really beautiful. It is so well made, that allows you to, it takes up very little pocket space, and it allows you to be able to do this incredible prediction uh, using a scratch card of two freely named numbers. Yeah. I mean, wow. I mean, how... How permanent, you know, one of the reasons I love some of the stuff I do with my tattoos is because it's blatantly a permanent prediction. Yeah. They know that you're not going to, like, get, you know, like when I do that trick that I was doing to, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. everybody knows that those five cards I've predicted beforehand. Well, it's the same with the scratch card. Same with the cube. Yeah, same with the cube. All of them, everything. And the card. Yeah, exactly. All of it. Um, yeah, much. everything. The car, the, 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 the time. Yeah, the time, everything. the time. Um, it's the same with, with this. Because everybody knows that a scratch card can't be like made in real time in front of somebody. So the fact that you take the scratch card out that's been there from the very beginning and they scratch it off and it's got the numbers that they freely named with no force on them. That's just incredible. And it's also very easy to do, isn't it? Yeah. Like really easy to do. Now... The only negative, not negative, but uh, you you have some of these and you have to get refills because obviously every obviously. time every time you do it, you use a scratch card. Now, the refills are 
very well priced and you can get them from the secret tannery as well and, and how much, we and how much i can't remember how much it comes in like 20 or 30 so enough to practice and get good at it and do it out at a few gigs and so on and so forth and then, get in the and then you go and buy some more yeah, refills yeah, yeah. You, and, know, um, you know you know sticker kicker it's yeah. got five refills yeah well i love sticker kicker yeah. um i'm ordering another one of these wallets because you've stolen this one um, we've got a load of refills for it already, but this is so strong. This is such a strong routine. If you don't mind getting refills, then this is one of the strongest predictions I've seen. It's so logical. The routine just absolutely makes sense. Yeah. How you get that done in the real time, it's killer. It's absolutely yeah. killer. Yeah. Um, it is. It is. Like trick of the week, for yeah. me, one of the best tricks of the year. Yeah. Um, uh, it's just really good. I've got nothing else to say about this. It's it's not that hard to do. There's no angles really nope. uh, to consider. Um, it's um, it, it plays big. It, the reset is like ten seconds. If you carry a few of these scratch cards around in your in your pocket or in your close up case, when you've done it, all you have to do is pop another one in the wallet and you reset, ready to go again. Yeah. Um, so it's like a very minimal reset. Um, I'm going to give this a hundred percent. 110 percent i give you this 110 percent yeah you went over average yeah well this is one of the best tricks of the year 110 percent for me what are you giving it 119 119 percent from Ryland. 110 percent from me this is killer you can go then you get them from the secret tannery beg borrow steal no don't steal that's not nice but beg or borrow do whatever you can do get yourself one of these they are really good don't steal don't steal stealing is bad Okay, so it comes to that favourite time that we have on Magic TV when we look at another Peter Egging trick. This time we've got Peter Egging and Alex Latore. Uh, I think Alex Latore worked with Peter Egging on the card through window as well, which was terrible. Um, but this is called Ring Hole. I'll give you five seconds to uh, get the terrible name out of your system. There you go. So Ring Hole, uh, a ring flight through time and space. If you watch the trailer... The uh, performance, um, which I believe takes place in a garden. <gasps> Shocker. Peter Egging doing a performance in a garden. Um, if you look at the performance, uh, the, the performance is possibly one of the most illogical scripts I have ever heard. It's kind of like, hey, I'm going to take your car. I'm going to take your ring. I'm going to have it disappear. It's going to travel through time and space into another portal, into a portal, into another dimension. And uh, and then it's going to come back in a yeah, packet of it. Skittles. Mm -hmm. How, sorry, what's that got to do with portals? What's that got to do with ring holes? I don't really understand. That doesn't make any sense at all. It's a totally illogical presentation. It's just completely, <laughs> completely illogical. Um, but you know what? You can come up with your own presentation for it. Yeah. Uh, there's no live performance. There is, however, a performance for camera, which is in, in his garden, which is okay. And in all fairness to the trick, when you watch this and you watch the live performance, you were like, that's really good. You liked the performance. It fooled you. No, it didn't uh, fool you. Yes, it did. You no, had no idea how the banish worked. It fooled you. It did. It fooled you. Don't lie. Um, so in fairness to Peter and Alex and, 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 and the trick, um, the actual effect looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. It looks good. Um, and, uh, and you know, if you, if you don't know what it is, well, I'm not going to perform this, and I'll get, why, get to why in a minute, uh, but I'm not going to perform this. There's very few things that we don't perform on this channel. I'm not going to perform this. Um, but, it, it, you know, if you don't know what the trick is, the idea is very simple. You borrow a ring, you take the ring, and you do this kind of this, this, this you hold the ring here and you do this, and the ring kind of like just vanishes, and it goes into a portal to another dimension. It enters the ring hole, and it travels through the ring hole. And then you show your hands empty and you reach in and you take a sealed pack of Skittles out. And, and apparently when a ring goes into a ring hole, after being there for a while, the portal reopens in a packet of Skittles and you have them rip open the Skittles. And when they rip open the Skittles, uh, the ring is in there amongst the Skittles. Now, this is very similar in terms of effect to a trick that Saturn Magic came out with recently, which was a ring in Haribo packet. Now I'm yet to see that, but I am gonna review that because I'd like to uh, see what the differences are. Um, however, this so this has been done before. In fact, I remember years and years and years ago, people selling heat sealers for Skittles packets. So you could actually have 
uh, a Skittles packet and you could have it in your case and you could drop something in there and, you know, you've got the heat sealer to seal it up. So, it, you know, it's not a plot that's never been done before. So what makes this unique and the thing that, you know, a lot of people have been talking about is the vanish because it looks very clean and that's what made you go, oh, wow, that's a good trick. You take the ring and you just literally do this and the ring vanishes and then your hand's empty and you reach into your pocket and you bring out the... Um, you bring out the, the Skittles. So there's good news and bad news about this. First of all, uh, lots of good news, lots of bad news. First of all, this is not a terrible trick. Peter has not bought out another trick that's terrible. This is, an, this is a decent trick. This is a, 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 an okay trick. The problem with it is uh, the method for making the ring disappear because it is very, very, very convoluted. Um, in order to achieve that visual vanish. Now, I'm going to tell you a plus point about that this in a minute, but it's very convoluted, isn't it? Like how it works and how, yeah. first of all, you're going to have to, it takes a while to set up. It's why I'm not going to perform it because it'd take two or three hours out of my day to set this up and get it looking good. And I just know I'm never going to do this. So, but, but in order to set it up, you have to be wearing a jacket or you have to be wearing a shirt over a t-shirt like this. So you have to be, so there are clothing requirements. You are going to have to wear a jacket. And the method is like a more convoluted version of uh, Interlace by Richard Sanders. He actually even credits Richard Sanders a couple of times on the project. So, uh, but instead of having a ring go down onto your ring, uh, onto your shoelaces, uh, what's happening is it's going down into a pocket, into a packet of sweets. So in order for that to work, as well as using a sort of a similar methodology to Richard Sanders' routine, you've also got sort of invisible thread working into this whole thing as well, which allows you to take a ring and then you've got to do something in order to get the, you know, to get it into position. You cover and as you cover, the ring will vanish. And then by doing this, what happens will happen. And then you'll be able to go into your pocket. It looks like it's sealed. We'll get to that later on. They open it up and they pour out the, the ring. Now, for me, that's way too much to go to in order to achieve this trick. It, it just is. I don't know what you think. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. It's way too much to go for. It's just, it's just, now, interlace, and I don't do interlace, but I did. Interlace was a, a big setup as well. In fact, you even had to go to a, uh, uh, you know, like a seamstress to adapt your trousers. And I did that for a while. The difference with interlace, in my opinion, is interlace is more impossible. You borrow a ring and it appears tied onto your shoelaces. I think it's more impossible having it tied onto your shoelaces than it is just reaching into your pocket, taking out something sealed and pouring out the ring. I think it's more impossible having it go into your shoelaces. And also, it was more of a practical method, interlace was, because with interlace, you went into your pocket for a pen to do the vanish. And as you did that, you dropped it into what you needed to drop it into to have it positioned. With this... Because you're dealing with it up here and not down there, you can't go into your pocket. So that's why we've got the elastic, uh, the invisible elastic taking place as well. But by adding that, now you've got another element. Now you've got this ring flight type situation where you're having to attach everything together and you're having to rely on that going down into position without and you're dealing with somebody's ring here okay so you need to be careful we've all heard horror stories of people's rings disappearing because the magician has lost them it's to be honest why i stopped doing interlace and that's another story for another time but i stopped doing interlace because the ring bounced off my shoe and flew off into the middle of nowhere um this is even worse because you've got it it, 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 I was watching this and I was like, I wouldn't want to borrow somebody's ring here. I can see there's a lot going to go wrong with this. Um, and then it's going down into the shoot, so you're going to have to wear a jacket. And it's just a very convoluted method in order to get a ring into a packet. So I would never do it. Does it look visual? Yes. But that means that there's going to be angle issues. He, uh, Peter openly talks about how if you're outside, lighting is going to be an issue because you're dealing with elastic. If there's lighting outside, you have to have that in mind. Yeah. Uh, it's going to expose because there's no cover for that. So it's going to be like literally open and on display. So you have to bear that in mind as well. There's clothing restrictions. And it's kind of like you've gone through this whole thing 
in order to make this ring vanish as strong as possible and be able to show your hands empty. And I think that maybe if you wanted to impress magicians or you wanted to like enter FISM or something, or you wanted to enter a club competition and you wanted to do an incredibly strong vanish of a ring, uh, maybe you were a dynamo and you were doing a TV appearance. Yeah, you might want to do this. You might want to do it the cleanest way. If you want to fool Penn and Teller, Peter, if you're listening to this, go on Penn and Teller with this, you know, absolutely. However, for your normal gigging magician, or for somebody who's just doing magic down the pub for their friends or a social situation, this is just overkill in every stretch of the imagination. However, there is one good thing. So first of all, I don't want to say the trick's bad. It's not, is it? No. And I know I'm talking an awful lot. And the reason I'm talking an awful lot is that tends to happen when we're doing... I don't want you to talk. I'm sorry, buddy. I don't want you to talk. Um, but I've got a lot to say. Yes. <laughs> um, but the other... So, so it's not a bad trick. I just, and, and it's not a bad method. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad method. It's just I don't see many people watching this tutorial and going, I'm going to set that up. I just don't see it happening. Uh, it's going to be restrictive to other things that are going on in your pockets as well. So even if a close up worker goes, Oh, I really like this, it's going to take out other stuff that we've got in the pockets. There's a lot, a lot going on. However, there's one good part to this there is a gimmick that you get in here as well, which is designed to allow you to have a Skittles packet open and, 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 and uh, seal it as you take it out. And you can show it all around and it looks sealed and have them open up the packet and tip out the contents. And that's when the ring's in there. That particular method is brilliant. And you get one of those gimmicks. But Peter teaches you in great detail how to make other gimmicks. And you could literally sit there for an hour and you could probably make about 20 or 30 of those very inexpensively for like literally pence or cents, right? You and I both looked at this and were like, that's the best part of the project. Yeah. You said to me, you wouldn't do ring hole, but you would do, like, this is what we both thought we'd do. Have a pack of Skittles, take one of those gimmicks that I told you about and have it in your pocket so it's kind of open. It, it would want to close, but... If you put a Sharpie marker in there, that would keep it open. So you have, you, you get one of the gimmicks, which you get with ring hole, and then it'll teach you how to make more. Put it into a Skittles packet, which you've prepared. It probably takes about 20 seconds to prepare a Skittles packet. Take it, put it into a Skittles packet. You borrow a ring. You hold the ring here and you say, I need a magic wand. You go into your pocket. You take, the, you drop the ring into the Skittles packet. Take out the magic wand, which is going to close that whole thing up immediately. Give them the magic wand. Tap. The ring vanishes. Yeah. Immediately, yeah, yeah, yeah. you go into your pocket and you bring out the Skittles packet. They can see it all signs. It looks sealed because of the genius gimmick that's in here. They rip it open. They pour out the uh, the Skittles and the rings in there. For me, that's as strong as something like um, uh, Nest of Wallets by Nick Einhorn. That is incredible. I love that. And you could go to a wholesaler like Costco yeah. and you could get yourself like 100 Skittles packets you could spend two or three hours <laughs> making gimmicks up, throw them into your close-up case and just pop one in your pocket and take up no space, uh, just, just one pocket and you can have other stuff in there, stick your pen in there and you're good to go for the end of a ring and string routine, the end of whatever you want to do. That for me is where the real money in this trick comes from. And I'm so glad I got this, not for the overly complicated, ridiculous method <laughs> that wouldn't uh fit me at all and by the way again i don't want to say anything negative about the method in terms of it's very clever it will work but i just think in 98 percent of performing situations no one's actually going to do that so i, I don't want to say anything uh, negative about the method really other than it wouldn't work for me it wouldn't work for him but hell i love the actual gimmick and the idea of having prepped uh, Skittles packets or any packet that you want to. It doesn't have to be a Skittles packet. It could be an MMM packet or work with anything. Having it prepped. Oh, an MMM packet. Having a sign coin, having a, a ring, having anything. Heck, once you understand how this principle works, you could even have a signed folded card go in there. <laughs> so you could have a sign, you could have a card picked, Mercury card fold, go into your pocket to take another prop out, you know, while they're shuffling the deck, whatever you want to do, just wrap, 
and then you bring out these Skittles packets. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's honestly, there's so many brilliant applications of that one particular part of this project. So for that reason, I'm going to give this 90% because I'm absolutely going to use that. I think that's brilliant. The rest of the stuff, all of the little bits and pieces that come with it, I'm going to chuck it in the bin. I don't care. It's not for me. It's not for him. Somebody out there might want to do it, and that's great. More power to you. But for me, I want to keep things very simple. Very. I think you and I go to Costco one day. We go and buy 100 Skittles packets. Yeah, we, I'll eat one. We, I'll eat one. We're, we're eating healthy right now. So I'll eat one, you eat one. The rest of them we'll make gimmicks out of. No, and then we can not share them. No? M&M's. Yeah. M&M's. Mm -hmm. And we'll we'll share them out and we'll have like a hundred, like we do with the with the uh, Cuban bottles. And when you go and do a gig, you borrow a Cuban bottle. When I go and do a gig, I'll grab a Cuban bottle. We'll do a similar sort of thing, but this time with M&M packets. <laughs> so I'm giving it 90%. What are you giving it? You're going to do it? Yeah. Um, of course I'm going to yeah, do it. Yeah, uh, I'm on a... No, I'm on about that thing. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to... But I'm going to use... 79 for Peter Eggins. You've got to do it as a whole. Because of how the methods are. Mm -hmm. And But I'm... I'm... I want to do the part where it goes into your pocket. Me too. So... I'm so you've got to look at it as a whole. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to go 90. 90. 90%. Yeah. 90% from me and Ryland. It's... Uh, it's a really good idea. Congratulations, Peter Eggin. Congratulations, Alex Latore. Um, yeah, it's good. I, I think that uh, people will like it. Yeah. My, 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 my hat's off to you. Ring holds good. Terrible name. Terrible name. Terrible presentation. Terrible script. Good trick. Okay, so the final trick today is Cheeky Lips by Alexis Touchard. Cheeky Lips. Cheeky Lips, Cheeky Lips, Cheeky Lips. Um, yeah, exactly. Now, this is a 15-minute tutorial. Um, no live performances that I'm aware of. Uh, no, no live performances. But what it is, basically, is it is a couple of special gimmick cards that allows you to do a kind of a pseudo card in mouth. Now, you're about to see a performance of me doing it. And uh, I added the card to mouth phase at the beginning to kind of justify it because it's kind of a weird thing to justify. So I thought that the best way to justify it was to do an actual card to mouth. And then after the actual card to mouth, um, that kind of gives you a reason as to why you've got a pair of lips on a playing card. Uh, he doesn't actually do the card to mouth phase, so bear that in mind. But here is a performance of me doing cheek lips. Okay, right. I am going to show you an amazing trick. Okay. okay. Um, here's what I want you to do. Just, uh, by the way, I've got a very important card here. You'll see why it's important in a bit. But this card right here, uh, do you see it's like a mouth? Yes. That's kind of weird. I get that. But there's a reason why I've got a mouth on a playing card. <laughs> okay, there is a reason. I'm going to I'm gonna pop it over there. All right, we're going to get back to it in a bit. Now, can you grab a card for me? Any card. Okay, can you uh, remember the card? Don't forget the card. That's very important. Right. Okay. Take the pen, sign the card on the face. Look away. I will look away. This is a new pen. Are we done? Almost. Hurry up. Okay. Perfect stuff. Right, put the card there. Here's a question. If I could tell you what that card is, would that be good? Yes. It's the um, Ten of Diamonds. Are you impressed? No. Not impressed. Okay. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go one step further. Okay. We've got the Ten of Diamonds, yeah? Yeah. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you one last look at it. Yeah? Yeah. I'm going to pop it right here in this half of the pack. Now, with your thumb, can you push it in? You see the card, yeah? Yeah. Check this out. Watch. All I have to do is snap. See you know what happens? It goes to my mouth. <laughs> now that's a good trick, right? That's a really good trick. Magicians have been performing this trick for years. It's called the card to mouth, right? Now, we're going to try and do a different version of that, all right? Okay. Because the thing is, the reason I was able to get that card in my mouth is because you didn't know that I was going to put the card in my mouth, right? Yeah. You, you didn't have a clue. So I'm going to do it again, but this time you know, what, you know what's going to happen, right? Not only am I going to do it again so you know what's going to happen, I'm going to have it go into a different mouth. I'm not going to have it go into my mouth. My mouth. I'm not going to have it go into your mouth. Mommy's mouth. I'm going to do this. Watch. I'm just going to snap. You know what happens? What? You're not going to believe this. 
Do you remember what we did at the very beginning of this trick? Mm, we've I got a card, a card down on the table. Before you even sign the card, we've got a card down on the table. Can you remember what was on the Matt. other side? Now turn it over and have a look. That was not, turn, my, that was not my card. Now it's there's just a, a folded up no, card. Now no, no, there's a card in the mouth there. It's actually your card. And, and the important thing is, it doesn't come off, give it a rub. It's printed on there, right? It doesn't matter if you shake it or anything, it's printed on there. But what was your card again? It was the Ten of Diamonds, right? Ten of Diamonds. Watch this. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to just snap. And when I do, I can pull it out of the mouth. And you're not going to believe it. Look, there it is. Take it. Unfold it. It's glued together. <laughs> Got it. And that, that was my card. is your card that into this map. Now, that is a performance of Cheeky Lips. That's what it is. I mean, it's a very simple card revelation. It's a very simple signed card to impossible location. Yes. You've got a, uh, you know, you've got a card that's lost in the pack and it appears on the picture of then the lips. The and then, yeah, and then you pull it out, right? Um, yeah. There's a couple of other routines on there. You also get that. You want to grab that for me. You get this. Uh, this is not good. You get this um, keychain thing here, which looks like a pair of lips. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a second routine where you have a folded up card inside the lips. So you put that down on the table and you have someone pick a card. And when you take it out of there, the sign, the card that's in the lips the whole time is the signed card. And it's a little bit like um, Paper Clipped by Jay Sankey. It's not, it's different in terms of the handling, but it's the best way to describe it is a little bit like uh, Jay Sankey's Paper Clip. So there's that. And then the final routine combines this and the cards. And it's uh, kind of like an amalgamation of the first routine uh the second routine and also throws french kiss into the equation as well uh by wayne Houchin without credit so you you have like a, a phase that's all kind of uh, french kiss style and then you have it appear in here and you have it jump onto the car there's a lot going on um uh, what what do you think i'm 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 very non plus by it. i think it's like all right but i don't like it really it's 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 just like an it's 69. A, it's an 69. Yeah, it's an odd thing to bring out. First of all, I'm not going to bring this out. Not in a million <laughs> years. If I'm going to have a card appear in an impossible location, it ain't going to be a pair of plastic lips that it appears in. I've got a million <laughs> different ways of making a folded up card appear, and it ain't going to be in some plastic lips. Let me tell you that right now. As for the card with the lips on it, it's like it just it, it just feels a little bit too gimmicky. It's kind of like look, I've got this card with some lips on it. Of course you have, mate. Yeah, of course you have. Um, it, it's just, it's, uh, it's, it's all right. It's the, there's nothing bad about it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's a very quick. Um, you know, I mean, for example, he teaches you how to do the. Well, he doesn't. He says right now, do a Mercury card fold. He doesn't teach you how to do the Mercury card fold. When all three of your routines require the use of a Mercury card fold, I think the least you can do is teach them how to do a Mercury card fold and not go now do a Mercury card fold. All right, mate, how about you teach us how to do it then, mate? Um, no, so I think it's a little bit gimmicky. I think there's better ways to achieve it. Uh, I don't think it's a bad product. It just doesn't inspire me. It ain't going to be something I'm ever going to do. Um, uh, it's not going to be something he's going to do. Um, if I'm going to do a Mercury card fold, there's a million things that I can do with it that are better. Uh, I think they could have spent more time on the presentation. Uh, I think they could have spent more time on the tutorial. I think the, they ordered these in from some novelty store really, really cheaply and just thought, oh, we'll throw that in as an extra bonus. I mean, this looks as cheap. This is the sort of place that you, this is the sort of thing that you'd get in a seedy little gift shop down some grotty little side street in Blackpool. You know, you're walking down Blackpool and you've got lost and you've walked down a little side street and you're walking around and there's a gift shop that looks like it's from the 1950s and you walk in there and everything looks like it's absolutely ancient. And the woman behind the counter is like, well, it was. And, and you walk over and, and, and you find a pot full of these for like 10p or something like that. That's what this looks like. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 just, it's, just, it's just a bit uninspiring and a bit naff. Uh, so you gave it how much? 69. 69%. Mm. That's, that's my favourite number, you know. Is it? Yeah, yeah I like yeah. it. I just like 69, it's my favourite number. Always like 69. Did you not know that? Mm -hmm. There you go, it's my favourite number. What's your favourite number?
Daddy. <laughs> My favourite number is 69. Anyway, uh, I'm going to give this 50%. The daddy number. The daddy number. Which is, which is the age of you. 46. Yeah, 46 at the moment. Yeah, 46, 47, 47 soon. Shut up. I'm old. Um, I'm going to give this uh, 50%. It's all right. I mean, you just saw a performance. If you like the idea of a playing card appearing in some plastic lips, or you like the idea of having some plastic lips on a playing card and pulling a card off the plastic lips, then, you know, if you've ever had a burning desire to do that in your close-up act, and, you know, you've sat there night after night feeling unfulfilled with your magic. You know, you've gone out and you've done a great show and everyone's loved it and coins across and you go, you just sit there and you go, I don't feel like a real magician. I would feel like a real magician if I could make a card appearance and plastic lips. Well, guess what? whoop doo now is your chance. Now, finally, can you feel like a real magician and you can have that card appear in between some plastic lips? For me, him, and probably the rest of the magic community, we'd say no. And that's another review show. We're in the back. That's another review show. In the back. That's another review show. No. Back. It is another review show in the back. Ouch. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching us right here on Magic TV. We really, really appreciate it. Now, this should be coming out at around about the time that Eastbourne's on. So make sure you come over to Eastbourne. Ryland is performing on one of the gala shows with Oliver, Oliver Tabor. I'm doing a lecture there as well. So there's a lot to come and check out at Eastbourne. If you're going to be there, and then the following week, it's going to be the Magic Circle. You are on the same bill gotcha. as... Yeah, you're going to be on there with Mark Oberon, Mark Spellman, Tom Stone, Nicola Arcane, Kat Hudson... Alan Hudson. How the hell did you get on that gala show? I don't know. I don't know my either. friend Michael J. Fitz. <laughs> your friend is Michael J. Fitz. Yeah. Friend. Yes, yes. He is, he is your friend. Uh, guys, thanks very much for joining us right here on Magic TV. If you haven't already done so, go and join the Netflix at www.thenetrix.com. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already done so, follow this young man on Instagram. He's now over 10,000 subscribers. Stop saying that and say follow you. Yeah, well, nah. It's all good. I get, I've got, I've got almost 3,000 subs now, you know. I am, you're two and a half. <laughs> no, it's coming up on 3,000, so shut up. <laughs> How come you've got more subscribers and I've got full followers? Because I focus on YouTube, you focus on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be back again tomorrow. We'll see, uh, well, we'll be back next week. I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Craig. I'm Riley. We'll see you again. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>